My name's Tom, I'm 34 years old uh, and I work in marketing. I think I started to lose my hair when I was maybe about 21 or 22 and I always used to have the, the long curtains, David Beckham standard in the early days. But um, I had a little patch that started to disappear here and um, yeah, I went to the hairdressers one day and he combed my hair back and there was a big chunk missing and the next thing I did was run home and shave all my hair off just to be brave enough to see that I could handle a, a shaved head. I think you kind of get to know through culture that your appearance is, is quite important in terms of um, work, success, people's perception of you and I think when you're young actually you're, you're acutely aware of that when you're particularly awkward when you go through teenage years. Uh, in my teenage years I had a lot of spots so I lost all of my spots and then when I was 22 started losing my hair and I thought well phew, come on you know what do we need to do so my attitude to it was to shave my head, go to the gym, get a different look um, and for a time that was fine because I had still had plenty of hair, you couldn't really see much loss. But over the years, my hairline slipped back, slipped back, slipped back, slipped back, um, uh, until it kind of made me look a little bit haggard. So yeah, I guess, although I'm a confident person, there's that bit where you feel like you're not quite 100%. Tons of time on some beds to make my head look <laughs> dark all over. Um, shave my head every single day um, to a level where you couldn't really see the the hairline or anything like that. Um, I guess you kind of adopt a different character and different characteristic. But I would mostly be happy, probably from the nose down. <laughs> there was always a bit of me that thought I could look better. What if I was complete? What if I would look like I did when I was, was 22? You know, I played, in, I played in rock bands for years and uh, my, my choice of outfit when I played in the rock band, it was no coincidence, I always wore a beanie. And uh, it was kind of because I thought, well, who wants to who wants to go and look at an old bald dude sing rock songs? So I think it, it does change the way that you feel about the types of music that you can do and um, how you can present yourself. And I think the confidence for going out and playing gigs and, and trying to get back into it in a way that um, I'm making the most of something that I've always done um, will be a good thing. But yeah, I think um, hopefully, hopefully um, it, will, it will do me a favor. I looked at hair transplants, um, all those kinds of treatments, but in looking at hair transplants, for me it always looked like it never really worked and it looked like at some stage that was going to be something that would fall out straight away again and what was the process, what was the procedure, it, it, didn't, it didn't look to me like something that would suit me. Um, so my attitude then at that time was there is nothing available on the market that suits, I'm not going to spend £30,000 on a hair transplant and um, I'll just shave my head and try and make every aspect of myself other than my hair good. Probably about two years ago I again you know, had a moment thought well let's have a look let's see 10 years have gone by I can take a look and see if there's anything else out there um, and that's where I came across uh, the website for scalp. I couldn't quite believe when I first saw a couple of the testimonials that actually that wasn't hair. Um, and then I was interested. I'm always dubious, trust nothing, trust no photographs. Um, and I wanted to see for myself what it actually looked like. My biggest fear, and this is probably most people's biggest fear, is to have a head that looks like a robot. That was my biggest fear. Um, so I wanted to come to the place and have a conversation and share my fears and really suss out whether it was something that I wanted to do. So I, I came over to Manchester, um, sweaty palms, not really sure about what I was going to go and talk about. But fortunately I turned up and, um, and one of the guys that I, I'd seen a video of and was really impressed by his treatment on the video and in the photographs, he was there dropping off cakes because he was so pleased with the experience that he'd had. So I got the opportunity to talk to somebody who'd had the treatment as well as obviously the guys that are the practitioners who have had the treatment themselves. And um, yeah, I, I just felt like I had uh, uh, the most inadequate hairline in the room and uh, I needed to do something about it. And when you look at what it costs, when you look at what the ultimate treatment looks like, for me, that's, that's an investment. That, that is an investment in myself to feel better and you know feel good about myself. They were kind enough as well to talk to me for an hour, four coffees, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, so I think if I remember correctly, I paid the deposit in the room and booked in for, for two months later and then really it was then just waiting for two months to be able to get in and have the first treatment. Uh, and on the website there is a tool that allows you to get a mock-up. So you send in photographs of yourself and the guys mock up a, um, a mock-up um, to show you what you might look like with hair. Um, and mine came back 
and I, I thought it took about five years off me. So that was the first step of me thinking, hmm, okay, maybe this is a thing. Um, and from there, from that to the consultation, really after those two things, there was no doubt in my mind that that was the right thing for me to do. But in reality, the treatment is so much better than the mock-up. Uh, because the guys take the care and attention and the time with you to understand what works for you in a balanced way with the way that your face works, with your features. Um, you know, you may even be suggested a hairline that you never had from birth, but actually it suits you a lot better than the one you did. Um, and that was certainly the case for me. So the mock-up was great. It got me through the door to come and speak to the guys, but actually now the treatment for me, yeah, it's, it's far better than the mock-up ever was. Because really the treatment is quite delicate. It doesn't involve an awful lot of pain, but you can certainly feel as, as it calms down a little bit. I thought I'll be brave. I'll go to a couple of shops and pick up a few bits on the way home. I did. Nobody looked, like me, looked at me like I was weird. It was just normal for everybody. And I got home and my girlfriend was pleasantly surprised because I must admit, she had kind of counseled me against doing something like this. She thought, no, no, be as you are. Don't mess with yourself at all. Um, but actually, the first time she saw it, she said, ah, right, I get it now. I understand why you've done it. It kind of looks normal. It kind of looks so normal that I don't understand why you've paid the money for it. <laughs> yeah, well, I think certainly the songs that I've written since, um, since having it done have been a little bit more upbeat, so uh, they'll definitely cheer people up a bit more than the songs that I wrote before. She had seen Oh, roll me over And help me get sober I'm drunk and I'm cooked And I'm done See you laugh through a glass of fall that on my ass And I realize what I've become So I pour me a fresh one To take off the edge I talked to I talked to one of my friends about this and said that um, people are reacting to me a little bit differently now, and I don't know why. It feels it feels like there is a there's a different perception of me now. I don't know why that is. And he made a good point. He said, well, what it probably is is that you're carrying yourself in a different way. You're probably more open. There's probably a small amount of you when you when you're balding, when you're losing your hair that makes you less confident and makes you not ashamed but there is a part of you that you think well okay yeah I'll just maybe not I'm not so confident about every single aspect of things but when you have nothing to worry about anymore and when I've always had a shaved head since I was 22 so this just looks normal to everybody now yeah you kind of there is nothing to be concerned about you have a hairline looks good clothes look better yeah so I think it has it has had a positive effect on that it's hilarious. I feel like a fraudster. I'll, I'll stand and talk to clients that I've known for four years and they say, why do you shave your head? You're not even bald. And I was, I was standing in the pub a few weeks ago talking to a couple of lads and one of them said, well, you know, it's not much of a haircut, but you've got a tremendous hairline. And I was like, hey, hey, do you know it's not real? And nobody can believe it. Nobody can tell the difference at all. So I think that for me is it's kind of funny at the minute. Um, uh, nobody, nobody brings it up. Nobody ever brings it up as a thing, and it's not out of politeness. They just can't tell because it looks so real. I, I have completely forgotten most days that I've had it done um, until I go into the go to the bathroom to wash my hands and look in the mirror and get a surprise that actually it's just a guy with a normal hairline looking back at me and it looks pretty good. So, um, so yeah, I think that is a, a great thing about it in that. It's on my head, and even I've forgotten that I've had it done. I just I've forgotten what it's like not to have airlines. So yeah, it's great. Uh, in terms of uh, a customer, so buying clothes, buying a product, buying a car, um, 
I'm like anybody else these days. I research and I go and look at what is available and look at. Um, it's not necessarily all about price and things like that because actually, if it's something like this, you want to you want to pay the right amount of money to get a good, good job. It's a very homely. It's almost like a little family atmosphere. You can go and hang out with your mates, but you come out with a full head of hair. And for me, that, what more do you want? Coming across to Manchester, it's kind of a it's a nice day out. You can go for some coffee get some dots put on your head and walk home feeling a million dollars. The amount of people that haven't noticed that I've had this treatment is a kind of glowing testimony to the fact that the work is of a real high quality and a high standard. So if you add that up with the service levels, the aftercare, um, the fact that you make a couple of new mates as a result of doing it, that for me is a really important thing. So I think if any business is out there that, that that is trying to promote themselves and trying to get positive feedback. If those are the things that those businesses would be receiving, they'd be delighted. So I think they're doing something right and they've got a good ethic. And if they could roll out and replicate that ethic, then every bald man in the UK would have a decent hairline in about five years, I think. And that's probably what they're aiming for. For me, um, it's absolutely the only solution that will resolve the issue of a bald-headed man who wants to have a hairline again. Um, I look at celebrities who have had hair transplants, none of them look good. Um, probably the ones that I do are wearing a mixture of wigs, transplants, hairsprays, all kinds of things like that. Um, I shave my head every day anyway. So I shave my head every day now, but it just looks a lot better. So if you suit a shaved head, and you want a bit of a sharp hairline, or a soft hairline, or whatever hairline you actually want, because they will do anything that you want for you, then SMP is really the only way to go, I think. And certainly with the service from Scalp and the extra time and attention they put to get it right, um, I think they're a business you can trust. Don't make it so